Hello, this is Young Dungeon Master and today we'll be talking about homebrews. So what is it? Homebrewing takes a lot of forms. Altered rules, new systems, custom built classes and occasional magic item. All the stuff you come up on your own and it was not published by official game designers. The main goal of homebrewing is to tailor gaming experience for your group. In recent years it became almost expected by the game developers. However, it is vital to make it clear with your players to what extent you are going to homebrew. While majority of the players are okay with homemade magic items, not everybody is okay with the new systems and rewriting the core mechanics. It becomes an important issue to understand when to homebrew. I would suggest asking your players upfront if they want something extra, a bit more depth in already existing rules, or maybe something completely new that is not covered by the existing rules. Homebrewing is not always about adding stuff. Sometimes it's omitting an overly complicated rule and replacing it with something a bit more streamlined. You could also take initiative, in particular when you want to invoke a certain style of gameplay that would be hard or impossible to execute with existing rules. Dismemberment, contracting illnesses, expanded combat actions, in-depth crafting and so on. But don't spread yourself thin. Pick a couple of elements and really focus on them, integrating them into your campaign so that they would fit naturally. Actually, it's a good strategy overall to warn your players at the start of the campaign that you might hope to do something along the way and observe while you play. Think what is missing or needs to be fleshed out. After 4 or 5 sessions it should be clear if anything is lacking. If everything is fine, great, you don't need to homebrew at all. And if you edit something and it is not working as intended and there is no easy way to fix it, just take it out. There is no reward in toughening it out and forcing it upon your players. They are primary, if not the only audience, for your homebrew content. Keeping in line with the soul and internal balance of the original rules is admirable and necessary if you wish to introduce it to a wider audience. But in your home game, go wild and be bold and don't be afraid to experiment. As long as your group is having fun and enjoying themselves, who cares if it's imbalanced? I remember a few years back I homebrewed the hell out of Rogue Trader. It was organic. Uh, we started with vanilla rules and slowly over two years I made custom rules for, oh boy, uh, crafting, squad management, squadrons, agents, ship upgrades and warp navigation. I believe by the end of the campaign I think I even completely reworked character progression so it would fit the Dark Heresy 2nd edition. I am sure I was the only one who knew all the rules and it had an intentional consequence. My players stopped playing the game and started role-playing. They knew that there were systems behind the Dungeon Master screen and trusted me to interpret their role-play into mechanics. Basically what they did is offload all the crunch onto me. So all those systems kept me consistent and in check, leading to a very coherent world. After that I started using homebrewing in more insidious ways. When we began playing Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, I didn't like resting system. I believe it encourages players to rush into danger without proper preparations. Instead of completely reworking the system, I added a small amendment that in order to heal during the short and long rest, they require to spend a single healer's kit charge. I did it in order to drag characters into shops where they could buy healer's kits. I know that my players are impulse shoppers. They would buy a lot of adventuring gear if it was properly presented to them, and if there is a sale, they cannot pass on a good deal. Recently something weird happened in a game where I was a player, not a dungeon master. I was lamenting that I couldn't play with what I called Iron Man rules, because other players would never go for it. And my dungeon master allowed me to play with different rules than everybody else. Nobody protested, so we did just that. I don't know why it is so mind-blowing for me because it is another case of if nobody protests behind the table, go for it. Maybe because it is rare for me to be on the receiving end of homebrewing? That makes me want to hear your stories about your experience with homebrewing. I hope this video was helpful and entertaining, uh, good luck with your roles and see you in the next video.